Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're going to look at what the stock market's been doing recently, what the Federal Reserve is doing to interest rates. We're going to look quickly at something known as the Fed dot plot. And then we're going to look for some potentially safe investments in a stock market that has been down a lot. And one of the main reasons the stock market's been down so much is because of what's been going on with inflation. To illustrate, this is the inflation rate going back the past few years. And we could see that recently, inflation is way up there. This is the highest level in like 40 some odd years. And this is a real bad sign for the economy, or at least for the stock market. So we're gonna look for some safe investments in this type of market and what the Fed is doing and how that could play out over the next couple of years. But before we jump into that, I just wanna tell you real quick about an investing platform that we're building. We've already got the beta version of the website up where we built a discounted cash flow calculator, but the plan is to build a discounted cash flow calculator and a whole ton of other valuation methods on top of financial statements and the ability to do the research, research a stock right on the website. But the idea is that you punch in a ticker, maybe a company like Tesla, the website will kick back the best possible valuation methods for that stock. And it'll tell you what the fair value of that company would be for each valuation method. It would work for regular stocks, it would work for something like a bank, it would work for a more stable company like Apple. But the idea is that we wanna make it quick and easy to try to find stocks that are worth researching closer. If we can do that, then the I think the way I think the website could be very, very useful to a lot of investors who are trying to get better performance out of their investment portfolio. Now, if you want to sign up to this website, like I said, we've already got the beta version of the discounted cash flow up and running, and we're continuing to evolve it uh, to try to gradually introduce more different, more valuation methods. So, so again, if you want to sign up, I'll leave a link in the description below. But for now, let's jump back to the inflation rate and look at what's causing the problems for the economy. So clearly, this is a problem. One of the reactions that the Federal Reserve has had to higher inflation is to increase the interest rates for short-term rates. This is the Fed funds rate. Basically, this is an overnight rate that the Federal Reserve controls. The Federal Reserve doesn't control all interest rates. They control the overnight lending rate. And, well, they control their overnight lending rate. And most other interest rates sort of follow suit with them. Not always as we would expect. We'll come back to this in a few minutes. But in their most recent, earlier this week, in their most recent announcement, the Fed announced that they are increasing interest rates by about 75 basis points. That's three quarters of 1%. That's 75 basis points. And if you were watching the news at all, if you're watching something like a CNBC or a Bloomberg, you might have seen them come out and say that 75 basis points is what is, what is expected but the thing that a lot of economists are watching for, even investors, big time hedge funds, people like that are waiting for is what is known as the Fed's dot plot. Okay, so this chart here is we're setting up what the Fed's dot plot is. So in 2022, just to illustrate, this came out in June, by the way, this is the previous meeting, not the one that just happened a couple of days ago. I'll show you that in a second. I just wanna show you how they've shifted because that's important. So the way that this works is each of the members of the Federal Reserve vote on where they think interest rates will be at the end of the year. So for this one, this is 2022 we're looking at. Where does where do each member believe, they vote anonymously, where each member believes that interest rates will be at the end of the year? Don't forget, this is a poll that was taken at the end of June. Well, each dot represents a different person. And the important number that we're going to pay attention to in a second is what is the average? What's the median number? What's the middle number out of all of them? Then when we fast forward to 2023, well, we can see that 2023, broadly speaking, nearly every member of the Fed thought that interest rates would move higher. This is where do they expect it to be on the, at the December 31st, 2023. Okay, fast forward again to 2024. Now you can see there's a wider dispersion, but in general, the average looked like it ticked down a little bit lower there. Okay, then they, if we jump forward to 2025, well, we can see there it was a little bit tighter. And in the case of the June meeting, this changed for the September meeting, but we'll come to that in a second. In the case of the June meeting, this is what they call the long run rate. This whole group here is known as the long run rate. And this is not necessarily what they expected at the end of 2025. They are saying that this is, you might hear this called the natural rate, 
or the neutral rate. Basically, 2.5%, that's the median number in this case, 2.5% is where they expect, given the current economic environment, that should be, if the Fed was at 2.5%, that would either be helpful to the economy, nor will it hurt the economy. So when we take the averages for each of these lines, well, we can see that right now, over the next couple of years, on average, the Fed is expecting to contract the economy. They're expecting that they're going to have to slow the economy. We know that because the, the Fed's expectations of interest rates are above the natural rate. So as long as it's above it, that should, in theory, slow the economy. When things get bad, they will drop it below it. And that, in theory, should speed up the economy. So now let's look at the September meeting of 2022. This just happened a few days ago. So in, in 2022, the Federal Reserve expects for interest rates to be significantly higher than the 2.5%, but also higher than where they thought it was just a few months ago. Probably because inflation hasn't gone quite as good as they were hoping it would. Okay, fast forward to 2023. Again, the average has moved up. Fast forward to 2024. Once again, the average although still much more dispersed than the first two years, which would make sense. Uh, it's tougher to predict out more years. So the further you go, the wider the dispersion would get. But again, on average, the numbers are higher than both the long run inflation, uh, natural rate that they would have set, that they would expect. But also they are expecting that on average, things would be a bit higher. Now, one thing that I mentioned before is that in June, they used the 2025 and forward numbers as the long run rate. Here, they actually added 2025 numbers. So these are not the long run rate. The long run rate actually stayed a, on average at 2.5%. So I'm just going to leave that orange line there. But we can see that they also projected out 2025. So that's about, you know, three and a half years from now, because this is the end of 2025, or three and a quarter years from now, the end of 2025. But we, the, it looks like the Fed is on average expecting that at the end of 2025, interest rates will still be higher than the 2.5%. To illustrate that, let's add the average line now. This average, the blue average, is above both what they expected back in June, but it's also way above, or a relative am amount above the natural rate. So if we were to clean this up a bit, I, this is one of the most important things to pay attention to. If you're ever looking at the Fed dot plot in general, one quick thing to look at is what is the average line? You can find this information right on the Federal Reserve's website. What is the median number? What is the average line compared to what they expect over the long run? That over the long run can change and will change through time, although it doesn't change as dramatically as some of the other numbers do, clearly. Okay, this brings us over to potential good investments. One obvious investment, the most popular investment is stocks. And if we look at a chart of the S&P 500 over the past year, well, clearly things have been bad. In fact, the stock market's down about 20% since the start of the year. That's a problem for nearly every investor's portfolio. Now, one potentially good investment, although it's probably not the sexiest of investments, is to consider something like investing in bonds. In fact, this is a chart of the two-year U.S. Treasury yield. In theory, this is one of the safest possible investments on the planet. If you're going to say a risk-free investment, this would be it. This is as close as anybody's going to get to a risk-free investment. Well, recently, this number is at 4%. It's above 4%, which means, and that's, by the way, an annual number. If we were going to invest in a two-year treasury, and if we held it for the full two years, well, we would get 4%, slightly over 4% each year. Sure, 4% might not sound like a great investment at this point, but when we go back to the S&P 500, the stock market's down 20%. Suddenly, having a 4% investment sitting there holding our portfolio higher could really be a helpful thing to do. So when we go back to the chart of the two-year treasury yield, again, 4% is a fairly secure investment. Now, if we're saying, hey, that's not, that's not, that's too safe, we got some other options in a second. But I do want to point out one thing. This is a chart of the two-year treasury yield. The yield is essentially the dividend that they pay, the interest that they pay. We, if we were to pay, and this is very important for us to, re for us to remember, is that if we were to pay $10 for a bond and pretend that bond pays $1 in interest every year, we pay 10, 
it pays a dollar, we are getting a 10% yield, right? That's what our return. But it's all based, they're always going to pay a dollar. Every year they're going to pay a dollar, but it all depends on the price we pay. So if we pay nine, well, the price, well, the yield goes up because we're still collecting a dollar, but we only paid 9%. We only paid $9, I mean. So we're getting higher than 10%. If we paid 11, well, the price will fall. The price is, I mean, not the, the price will fall, the yield will fall. Price and yield go in opposite directions. To illustrate that point, this is a chart of the one to three year treasury ETF put out by iShares. The ticker symbol is SHY. Basically, this is the same as buying treasuries. They buy the treasuries, they hold them, but you can do it in an ETF format. But you'll notice that the price of this has actually fallen. And that is very much because the yield, the yield has gone up and the price has fallen, or the yield has gone up because the price has fallen. And that's very important because I don't, I am not suggesting that I, what I am suggesting is that buying a two-year treasury is not the same thing as buying a treasury ETF. I hesitate on treasury ETFs because they are constantly rolling over the bonds that they have to own. They're constantly buying different treasury ETFs, uh, different treasury bonds. If I was going to buy a treasury bond, I would buy the actual bond and hold it for the full two years. Because at the end of the two years, the federal government, the U.S. government, is going to give us back our principal. So if we paid $100 for a bond, and I almost don't care what the price does. And if, you, and if interest rates keep going up, the price of the bonds are going to fall. So if I paid $100, I get my 4%, probably, you know, you get the money probably twice a year, semi-annually. And then at the end, they're going to give us back the $100. So you're almost guaranteed the 4% a year. So I just want to point out the difference between bond ETFs and actual bonds. That being said, let's see if we can find something that has a bit more yield, a, a bit more meat to it. So let's jump over to some yield curves. So yield curve essentially shows you the interest rate if you were to plot it out on different time periods. For example, so if we were to look at the treasury yield curve, the, the one we just looked at, well, we can see that on a 30-year perspective, well, the 30-year one pays slightly over 3.5%. Now, again, these are annual numbers. It would be 3.5% every year for 30 years. Probably not high enough if you're going to do a 30-year investment. But if you did the two-year one, again, it would be a call it uh, slightly over 4%. This is one we just looked at, slightly over 4% yield for two years. So 4% in year one, 4% in year two. Now, what if we would go to corporate bonds? So the first one we're going to look at is AAA corporate bonds. And there's two things that jump out to me with this. First, obviously, on the longer end, 30-year range, AAA corporate bonds look pretty good. They're a bit higher. But on the shorter term ones, specifically around the two-year region, well, the U.S. Treasury is actually above the corporate bonds. And by the way, that treasury is called an inverted yield where short-term rates are paying higher than long-term rates. That's a bad sign for the economy. We've done videos on that in the past. But it's also interesting to me here that AAA corporate bonds and treasuries are intermingling as much as they are. U.S. treasuries are supposed to be risk-free. While corporate bonds, AAA corporate bonds, these are huge companies, best credit ratings out there. You're talking companies like, I believe Microsoft has a AAA corporate bond rating, and that's fantastic. They have plenty of cash. They have plenty of capital. They have plenty of cash flow, plenty of ways to get money. So the odds of them not paying out back their bonds are extraordinarily slim. These are the safest of the corporate bonds. Okay, let's go to the next one, which has a slightly higher, call it a higher amount of risk. But because of that additional risk, they do pay more interest. This is the single A corporate bonds. And again, the two-year one pays a decent amount. These are, we're getting, if we want more yield, we can pick bonds like this. Now, for me, I'd rather stay in the shorter end of this. If interest rates were up near 10, 12, 14%, sure, I'd go 30-year corporate bond all day. 30-year treasury bond, perhaps, if those yields were up there. Okay, what about the next one? Now we have triple B corporate bonds. And the interesting part about triple B corporate bonds, let's focus just on the two year for a second. Two year triple B corporate bonds pay about 4.9%. Jump down the, to the A corporate bonds and they pay about 4.4%. Then when we jump over to the triple A corporate bonds, they're paying about 4.09%. And then the treasuries are paying 4.12%. So again, there is a range of investment here a range of different investments, depending on how much risk we want to take on. 
but these are in theory much safer than stocks. And if we again look at the stock market, when we look at a chart of the stock market over the past year, it's down 20%. This might investing in bonds could probably be a consideration for many investors. Now, for me in a personal basis, I don't own any corporate bonds or treasury bonds. I don't own any bonds as of this point, but it is something I'm beginning to look at. That's why I wanted to share this video with you. Now, I'm also spending a ton of time with the stock market being down this much. I'm spending a ton of time looking for great stocks, which is why one of the reasons we're building the investing website, the, one of the reasons, one of the things I use the discounted cash flow calculator that's already up and running over there. One of the reasons I use that so much is, hey, what can I find any great investments that when this market recovers, and surely there's no indication that the stock market won't recover. It'll probably do exactly what it's done every time for the past 150 years. It'll recover and start moving higher. And at some point, it'll be at all time highs again. Well, I want to buy as many good stocks at this price. But if I could protect my portfolio a bit right now in the shorter term, treasuries are a fairly safe investment. And we saw that the Fed funds rate is the, the, the Federal Reserve is expecting to keep interest rates high for at least a couple of years. So this could have a longer run effect on the stock market. Now, if you'd like to sign up to get access to the website, I will leave a link right here. I'll leave a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.